Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about Kugath. Yes, yes, I know, we already talked about the Nurgle rework, but Kugath has been a legendary lord since the release of Warhammer 3 and let's be honest, he's been one of the worst. Many people actively avoided playing him because there were a lot of issues that weren't just for Nurgle but also in general for Kugath. So I thought, you know what, he deserves his own video. He actually deserves a little bit of love. So let's talk about his faction effects. Adds an additional Bless Symptom when generating plagues. Adds an additional Bless Symptom plus one for every 10 ranks of faction leader. So the more that you level him up, the better your plagues are going to be. Growth plus 10 for faction wide. Recruitment health plus 10% for all demonic units. And then when we go into the Lord effects, infection cost to create a plague minus 25% for Lord's army. So you can make him like the actual nuclear bomb in terms of plague spreading. Nurgle corruption plus two for local province. And finally, chance of plague spreading plus 15% for Lord's army. Once again, if you want to send out the most violent plague possible, you're going to be able to do so with Kugath. And that's how his campaign is going to focus around now. His start location is exactly the same. I know a lot of people don't like it, but not only is it incredibly lore friendly for Kugath, but it also has a lot of effects for him now with Nurgle's brand new campaign thanks to the rework. While it is very tight in the Dragon Isles due to the fact that you have, well, a lot of ports and obviously some special buildings, those buildings themselves will generate a decent amount of money and also a quite good amount of infections. Infections being a key resource now not only for your plagues but also for your military buildings. So turning the Dragon Isles into an economy based province and then the next province into your military one will actually help out quite a bit. Kugath feels a lot better now when it comes to using his core mechanics thanks to this and it is very noticeable when you start playing. Yes, you still have the problem of Gorst at the beginning, but once you're done with Gorst, you're pretty much golden. Do keep in mind though that you do have quite a decent amount of settlements around your start which have the Woodlands building and these are really good for reducing the cycle time for your basic and advanced military buildings which again is going to be very useful for you so you have a lot more units in the bank just in case you might need them or spawning much more armies much quicker which by the way Kugath has had a few changes when it comes to his unique skill line. The majority of the stuff is still going to be very much the same, however there's some pretty big ones, like for example reducing the upkeep by 25% for Nurgling units. For all armies faction wide this will also give them regeneration if they reach rank 7 or above, and melee defense plus 5 if they reach rank 7 or above. Again, all armies faction wide. Then you've got another big one which is upkeep minus 15% for great unclean one units for all armies faction wide once again and they also get the passive ability slime trail and then lastly rotting ways is going to be really good for you when it comes to doing plagues because the chance of spreading plagues has been increased by 10% for all future plagues faction wide and the infection cost to create a plague will be reduced by minus 10% once again faction wide. He is becoming really good at not only having multiple swarm armies which by the way you don't have to go with the Nurglings if you don't want to you've got much better economy now thanks to the Nurgle rework so plague bearers and so on are useful but if you want to have a swarm of cheap armies just pushing their way out you're entirely able to do so and then getting great unclean ones at a much cheaper cost than any other Nurgle faction. So yeah, Doomstacking is entirely possible with Nurgle now, which I know a lot of people should be quite happy about, especially since Toad Dragons are coming in very, very soon. But you can finally have that Doomstack of Great Unclean Ones, which you've not been able to do for... Well, since the release of Warhammer 3, really. It was definitely not financially viable, right? When it comes to plagues, obviously there's been a massive overhaul, but something that we know from the faction effects is that Kugath has more bless symptoms than the other factions, and yes, you'll start off with one extra one compared to the others. This does mean that despite the RNG system, you're going to have more than the others and have stronger plagues overall, and it becomes even better when you start looking towards leveling up Kugath. The more that you use him, as you would with any other legendary lord, the better it works out, because now he will get a lot more symptoms. This means if you're lucky with RNG, you could end up with quite a good super plague. If not, you could just have multiple plagues that you can send out, all of them with one or maybe even two blessed symptoms. Either way, things are going to be feeling much more better when it comes to Kugath, especially since very early tech will allow you to get some growth bonuses for all provinces and also control for all provinces. This means that if you decide to push into the Mountains of Morn early into your campaign or 
sometimes you are kind of forced to fight Grisus very early on, then it fights off the negative that you will be getting for having to go into the Mantles of Morn, which are considered unpleasant. It's a bit of a shame, I would have liked those to be considered normal uh, for <laughs> Kugaf, but hey, you can still push into the Darklands, and most cases you'll be pushing into Cafe anyway, as there's a lot of settlements pretty up close, so you can spread plagues really quickly, and also, you know, do quite a lot of damage. Helmand Gorst is still going to be the first legendary lord that you're going to be dealing with in your campaign. However, I wouldn't say he's much of a problem now, thanks to the fact that you can actually recruit a bunch of units. You've got an army, like you can see on screen right now, Already, I'm at 17 units. Sure, a fair chunk of them are Nurglings, but I do have access to a lot of Plague Toads. I do have access to recruit some more uh, Plague Bearers. I have some stronger dudes that can fight them back without too much of an issue. And you won't have too many problems making up a second army in case you need to split them up because you know how it works here. He'll go to Flayed Rock and then go back down to the Scrap Towers. You're fine. You're actually perfectly fine here. It used to be much more of an issue, but it just feels so much better now, especially Especially with the rework coming into effect, where by turn 20-ish you should be pushing into cafe. Maybe even sooner, but this is me being generous because I was building up a second force and I was sorting out my economy to be able to have decent cash coming in, plus also just getting some plagues out. It does generally feel like the faction isn't so much of a slog anymore. The start of the campaign is going to be slow. Nurgle is generally going to be a slow start, but it starts to steamroll, I would say turn 50 or so. Hell, maybe even sooner, but I've just been throwing out plagues and doing as much damage with them as possible, whilst also getting some benefits for myself. The slog is still there, you can still use the original tactic of how it was two years ago, which was just a bunch of nurglings and so on, and it's still very viable, especially now that you can have multiple armies getting a lot of upkeep reduction. You can definitely have more armies than the other nurgle factions, that's for sure, and yeah, you can easily swarm through. But that being said, I do have to warn you that yes, Gelt is a problem, he has a lot of of magic which can do a lot of damage to you he also has a lot of artillery but if you can take him out before he starts getting to the point of recruiting ironsides uh, the land ship and so on you're gonna feel a little bit less stress Gelt is probably the biggest roadblock that you're going to be dealing with now. It's not so much Gorst. But again, thanks to the early tech bonuses, you can decide to completely ignore Gelt as he starts trying to push into Cafe, take the Mountains of Morn, get rid of Grimgor, who's probably going to be the biggest issue for you if he turns into an aggressive AI, which is usually the case nowadays, and then push into Cafe. I've had some pretty weird circumstances in my testing, though, where I've been able to ally up with Grimgor. I mean, I'm not sure if that's something that might be interesting for you, but the possibility is there. But yeah, I would say that thanks to the Nurgle rework and some minor changes that Kugaf himself has gotten, thanks to the changes around skill points, he does feel a lot better. I would say that Epidemius is probably a little bit better, even though he's probably got just as hard of a start, because right next to Malice, obviously. But having played a fairly decently long campaign with Kugaf, I would say now that he is, uh, he's not soul-sucking. It's, it's weird. It's two years he's been like this, so it's nice to see a difference. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. Only one video today, as I don't want to burn out right before the DLC embargo breaks, so I'm trying to take a, a little bit of a break here. But I will be live on twitch.tv slash the great book of grudges today, playing some Epidemius and just chilling on stream, so pop by and say hi. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.